Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Sri Harsha, and I am representing U dot in this workshop. So in the first presentation, like in the next presentation, he was talking the term U dot many times. Now I will try to explain what U dot is and what services we offer. So, so U dot is a consortium of HPC centers and scientific communities and data data scientists. And it is spread across the Europe. So we have many centers working together collaboratively. And uh, a brief history of how the UDOT project has begun. So the project uh, started as a European project in the late 2010. And then that, I mean, the first project ended long time ago. And then we had a subsequent project, which was UDOT H2020, which ended in February 2018. And now we have established a non-profit company called UDOT Limited. So the goal is, I mean, to provide services for uh, scientific and research data storage and life cycle management. So UDOT want to be an eye of European researchers and helping European researchers to yeah, do successful research. Okay. So how it all began was uh, back in 2010 when Europe published an article about how Europe, how you can gain from the rising tide of large data. There was a need for a set of common services that different communities can use. And uh, with that need, the idea of UDOT has developed. And uh, initially, we worked with different communities and have developed a set of services. And uh, we constantly improve our services based on the community needs. So this is the brief uh, timeline of the UDOT project. Yeah, it started in late 2011 and then uh, the UDOT ended in, at the end of, in the beginning of 2015. And then we have some other projects. And uh, yeah, and right now we are working in CData Cloud project and Envy Plus and uh, in European Open Science Hub. I'll, yeah, in the later part of my presentation, I will talk about what EOS case and how we are working there. So these are some of the communities that we have worked with over the time. Well, don't try to read them. The font is quite small, but I will briefly talk about different sciences we have worked with. We have worked with physical sciences and uh, earth and related environmental sciences and, and basic medicine nanotechnology. So we have worked with different fields. And at the same time, we, are, we also have worked with a lot of environmental research infrastructures like CData Cloud, ICOS, and NS. And then uh, we also do a lot of data pilots initially to evaluate a use case if UDOT can provide a service for it and how does it evolve over the time. So we worked with uh, EuroArgo, LifeWatch, and the DR, DRIHM. And these are some of the institutions and partners that we have worked with uh, while doing the work for environmental research infrastructures. Okay, so well, UDOT aims to provide services for whole research data management. So we have a set of services that target uh, all the life cycle, all the phases of the research data life cycle. So we have a service for data discovery, which is called B2Find. And uh, we have a services for uh, data access and sharing. They are called B2Note, B2Share and B2Drop. And um, we have service for services for data management and preservation. So there are services like B2 Handle, B2 Safe, and B2 Stage. And for user management, we have a service called B2 Access. So I mean, in UDA terminology, all these services are, are called B2 services to, I mean, successfully tackle all the phases of research data lifecycle. Now I'll get into details what these services mean. So, so the B2 Access is a federated authentication and authorization infrastructure. So a lot of EU, uh, EU organizations and infrastructures are already integrated to the B2 Access. So, and it is also a gateway for all the other B2 services. For example, if 
someone can use their own organization account if they want to use B2 services instead of creating an own account. And uh, we also have integrated with social accounts and also with the ORCID ID. And if any of you want technical details, on the right side, I mean, we have the technical details of different protocols that we are using and different certificates that we are supporting. And it is integrated with EduGain and all the major infrastructures in Europe. <coughs> And then we have a service called B2 Drop. You can think of it as a secure Dropbox for uh, European researchers. The main idea was uh, to store and exchange data and it supports different versions. And uh, we can also define a groups. So we can group set of researchers into, we can create a group for set of researchers. So they can share files among the researchers and can work with it and see the changes. And uh, right now we offer around 20 GB of space freely for any researcher in Europe through this service. Yeah. And you can operate this service on the mobile devices, tablets, and even on your desktop machines. And then uh, we have a service called B2Find. The idea is fi finding collections of data sets. So it harvests the data sets that you have somewhere located on your server. and. Um, it is based on a CCAN interface. It provides unique collection and ease of searching, and it's constantly developed, and has a uh, yeah, lot of support and for different harvesting protocols. Okay, and then we have a service called B2Share, which is mainly for um, sharing our research with the different colleagues across, across Europe or across the world. So the idea is that uh, I mean, once you have some data sets that you want to share with others, you can deposit data sets into B2Share and you can get a digital object identifier, DOI, or even a PID for it. And then you can reference it in a publication or article. And uh, you can also preserve the research data for long term, but only it supports only small scale data. Yeah. So, yeah, the main use case is that. Uh, it is used for registering data so that uh, you can directly refer the data in the publications and to share the research with other community. And then we have a service called B2Safe, which is mainly for uh, big, I mean, long, big data. So if you have data range, ranging from uh, gigabytes to terabytes, you can store this data in a service called B2Safe. And uh, we also have a high performance protocol so where you can I mean um, easily upload let's say terabytes of data into the service and also one main aspect of this service is that uh, you can bring data close to the big supercomputers so that uh, if you want to do heavy crunching you can you can do it and um, it improves performance and at the same time it also has backup automatic backup by replication between the sites so usually what we do is that uh, we can, um, if there are centers ac across Europe, we can automatically move data between different centers. So even if data is lost at one center, you always have the copy in other place. Okay. And then we have a service called B2Stage. So which is mainly an interface or like uh, for moving data between different, different services in UDOT. And um, it can be used to move data towards other centers like PRESS and EGI, which are HPC centers, and work on their clusters. So you can think of it as simply data transfer, like moving data from one place to another place. So yeah, we have a lot of B2 services. So, And there's a service called B2Handle, which is mainly for uh, registering data and getting a handle for it so that you can refer to data using the handle instead of knowing where the data locates. Okay. Yeah. And then we have a service called B2 Note, which is for creating RDF triples. And then it harvests information on ontology repositories and it supports semi-automatic annotation as, as well. And all, all the services, they are like quite interconnected with other services. So if you have data in one service, it's easy to move them to another service 
and then we are constantly developing new services based on the community needs so and these are some services which are which we started developing according to the customer needs or like requirements from the communities so the idea of uh, generic execution framework is that uh, instead of moving data to big computers we also want to bring user tools to big to the data centers so user can provide their tool in a kind of marketplace and can upload the tool there and then we run the tool close to the data and then um, we have a service for data subscription the idea is here is that uh, i mean the data is growing constantly and the users have to frequently repeat their search identifying if there is any new data or not so here the idea is that uh, user can subscribe to a data set and whenever the data set changes user gets a notification that okay the data set has changed and we can also offer a link where the user can download the data and it's it's quite a generic service we can uh, tune it for different needs okay so yeah europe i mean adik has talked briefly about european open science cloud now i want to go into bit details so the european commission has started the european cloud initiative to capitalize on the growing amount of data the main idea is that uh, to bring state of the art data storage and computing facility to anyone in europe to the fingertips of any researcher and any engineer in europe so the goal is to federate all research infrastructures and uh, create a virtual environment for all researchers across europe and uh, provide long term and sustainable services and in order to realize this european open science cloud european commission has started a project called eosc hub which has mobilized as partners from like 20 major digital infrastructures like udot and egi and indigo data cloud so the idea in this project is to offer services connecting all the different e infrastructures and uh, with the different communities so uh, as you can see udot is uh, playing a key role in realizing european open science cloud and is major part in lot of projects related to eosc so the mission of eosc hub is that uh, to create a federated integration and management system for future european open science cloud so what does this mean for a european researcher is like um, so the researcher has broader access to his scientific discovery and he can use a virtual workplace across i mean maintained by different infrastructures having high availability standards and then the modern set of tools yeah. and uh, we are also partnering with the different infrastructures like uh, we work with open air where the main goal is to promote open science in europe and you are just working in realizing this goal so these are some of the services that we are going to offer through eosc hub so we have the e infrastructures like egi federation and udot cdi and then we have services from some communities like humanities there's clarin and daria and then from engineering from medical and health sciences and also from natural sciences so we have uh, marine and freshwater biology from ifremer and then icos lot of services so the infrastructures they offer generic services and then we have thematic services from the communities and also as part of this we have some um, pilots as well in european open science hub so there are some thematic service providers and then competence centers we have competence center for uh, marine research in european open science hub so the idea is that uh, to create an open and uh, data analysis platform backed by the big infrastructures so that all marine researchers can come to this portal or plat platform and then can work on the data and create new data products and do data analysis and can do all aspects of the data life in yeah, data science process okay so how you dot moves forward is that uh, we try to create new pilots like by partnering with different communities 
and we do a lot of joint activities and then uh, we help a lot of different communities in creating i mean uh, in part in establishing future european open science cloud and also bringing them to, into the european open science cloud and then how to integrate into the infrastructures yeah so we already have some some background in there so how to how to leverage the ex existing infrastructures and how to build new services for the future european op open science cloud and we also work with the communities for the future h2020 calls so this is how the udat goes forward okay so that's it from me about udat uh, so do you have any questions okay yeah thank you for your time